Some of the stories that we air do come with a warning. This is one of them because some of the things that we're about to show you are disturbing and can also be triggers to victims of domestic violence. So please take this moment to take that into consideration. This woman who you are about to meet wanted her story to be as open and real as possible in an effort to help others know that they're not alone. For far too many women, every day is living a nightmare. You're a piece of Taking blows by words. Backstabbing Or by sheer violence. Because when you jumped over the table at me. No, because you're fault. My fault. Go ahead. You go on and on saying that I'm doing all this bad and the other. Yeah, I'm very aggressive. Yeah, I'm very hurt. Yeah, I drink a lot. You're right. Absolutely. You know why? Because I do that to drown my sorrows every day. This is Michael Strong, Christina McIntosh's husband for 10 years. His voice in those videos still haunts her. She shows us pictures, bruises to her face, broken bones and marks around her neck for one of the many times she says Strong strangled her. Purgatory. And every once in a while, I got to get out and go to hell. Her voice quivers when she speaks of him. Her hands start to shake. That's because she feels yeah. at risk for her life and is angry. The bail project paid $5,000 cash for Strong's bond. They just got to be kidding me. You're a joke. The bond was set that high so he couldn't get out to kill me. The judge did that for a reason. The Bail Project, a national organization with a chapter in Louisville, believes that freedom should be free and money shouldn't determine who gets out or stays in jail. They claim they researched the person's case before posting their bond to make sure they'd be a good candidate. So I researched Strong's case. I mean, cases, too. Right across the Ohio River in southern Indiana, I found 13 previous charges of domestic violence, including one charge for strangulation, which was dismissed in exchange for pleading guilty to domestic battery. It was one of four domestic violence convictions. That's aside from the strangulation and assault charges brought by Jefferson Town Police for McIntosh. The strangulation charge, a felony, was later amended down to attempted strangulation, which he agreed to plead guilty to. I literally, literally, every day I had to fight to stay alive. What do you pay for? Get out of my face and leave me alone. You don't pay for sh Mike, get out of my face and leave me alone. The years of abuse McIntosh describes makes leaving, experts say, that much more difficult. So there's this underlying sort of psychological abuse that often is the basis upon which the violence erupts. Doris Lee Gilbert is the former director of the anti-domestic violence organization, the Mary Byron Project. Gilbert says posting bond in a domestic violence case should be considered carefully since lives are at stake. Maybe they never called the police before because the person said to them, if you call the police, I'm going to kill you. At the time the bail project bailed Strong out on March 2nd, they told us Strong had come to court for five hearings and hadn't violated any court orders. In the criminal case, there was no mention on paper about Strong's criminal history or the pictures and videos McIntosh had. But just down the hall in family court, the history, the pictures, and the violence Hello. were all on paper for anyone to see. On February 5th, one month before the bail project bailed him out, the judge had issued and reissued emergency protective orders in her courtroom, something McIntosh says the bail project should not have only read, but considered. Take that money and give it to victims. Take all that money you brag about. Give it to the ones that need a voice. Give it to the homeless. Even through the trauma, McIntosh is fighting, unafraid to share her story, if not for her case, for the sake of the thousands of women who know exactly what her experience was like. But I'm not going to live my life in fear anymore of him. I'm going to stand up. And I want every victim out there to know that they can be a victor. 
I did talk with the local manager of the bail project, Shamika Parrish Wright. She told me that they were not aware of his criminal history because it was Indiana. She also said that they did know about the family court case, but they did not look in that file and therefore did not know that there was an active emergency protection order. Here was her response. We're talking about two different things. That family court case we didn't have access to was not the case that we were brought in to bail him out on. But he that's, was, I understand that. But what I'm asking you is, should you? Should you have known to look in that case, knowing that you can have a domestic violence charge in family court? We always consider any information that's presented to us, any information that we can readily get. We did not have that. And Parrish Wright insisted they did their due diligence, but also told me to consider two things, that the judge set the bond at five grand and that he is innocent of those charges until he's proven guilty. She also stood by her team who bailed him out. Natalia Martinez, Wave 3 News.